Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be setting up some simple animations for the sword and shield. So the first thing we need to do is just attach these to the hands, and we could do this by just parenting them directly to the hand bones, but uh, for a little bit more control I'm going to be creating an additional bone coming out of each of these hand bones, uh, just so that we can sort of move and rotate the items that the character is holding without having to affect the hand itself. So I'm going to go into edit mode on the rig, I'm going to press T and just make sure the x-axis mirror is on here in the armature options so that when I select this little joint here of the hand bone and extrude that out, you can see it gets uh, mirrored on the other side as well. I'll select that bone, press Alt-P and just disconnect it. So it's still parented, just we can move it out a bit if we want. And I'm going to go into the bone properties here and I'll call this one hand hold dot left and this one, handhold.right. Okay, now I want to grab the sword and just position that so that the origin of this object is at the head of the uh, handhold bone here. So I'm going to go into pose mode with control tab and select the bone, shift S, cursor to selected, and then I'll select the sword object, shift S, and say selection to cursor. To parent it, I'll now shift right click to select that handhold bone, control P, and set parent to bone. So now you can see we can rotate and move this bone around to manipulate the sword. And since that's parented to the hand bone, oops, that's the finger, uh, that works as well. Okay, let's do the same thing for the shield. So select handhold left, this is again in pose mode, shift S, cursor to selected, and then select the shield object, shift S and selection to cursor. I very quickly want to turn the shield into a single object, so I'm just going to select this little cross, and in the modifiers I'll just apply all of these, and then shift select the shield, control J to merge that into a single object, and then could parent this to the handhold bone, so just shift select that bone, control P, set parent. Okay, so with that done, I'll drag out another window for my animation view here, set that to dope sheet, and change the mode to action editor. And I want to create a single frame grip animation for each of these hands. So create a new action, call this grip right, and press the F key there to just make sure that gets saved. And I'm going to come into front orthographic view, and just grab this handhold bone, and just sort of nestle the sword into the palm of the hand there. And now I'll rotate the fingers to close around it and press Control 3 to go into the left side view and just rotate this so that it's not clipping at all there. And then I'll grab the lower fingers and just rotate those as well. And from the side here, maybe you're going to need to bring the handhold bone a little bit forward on the Y axis to make some room for the thumb. I'll just position that. Something like so. Okay, so once we're happy with that, we can just select these hand bones here, and with the active keying set set to location and rotation, I'll press I to insert the keyframes. Now, it doesn't matter if you insert keyframes for any of these other bones, how this is going to work is whenever the character is holding something in his right hand, We'll play this grip animation on top of all other animations, but with a mask applied so that only these hand bones that we care about are affected. Okay, let's do a similar thing for the shield hand. So I'm just going to close this action, create a new one called grip left, save that, and I'll just select these hand bones, press Control C to copy the pose, and then Shift Control V to paste that over to this other hand and I'm going to select the hand hold bone. I'm just going to rotate this around the Z axis like so, and just orient the shield roughly like this. It's not actually modeled in, but you can imagine some sort of straps holding the shield in place. All right, I'll now select those bones, and I to insert the keyframe. Okay, the next thing I'd like to do is create some sort of idle combat stance. So I'm going to enable the armor, and I'll create a new action called maybe combat underscore idle. I'll save that. And 
Okay, let's maybe put this one foot forward. Bring the body down. Can maybe be facing a little bit sideways. And I'll bring this foot back so he's ready to lunge forwards. Have this sword at the ready. Uh, the head should still be looking straight forwards, I guess. And the shield can be up. So just something roughly like that I think is okay. Maybe just rotate the hand a bit so the sword isn't quite so wonky. And I just rotate the body slightly forwards. Okay, Grun set a keyframe for that. And then I just like to add some slight up-down motion to the body. So we're gonna come forward 20 or so frames and just bring the hips down a little bit and maybe add some subtle rotation to the arms as well. Uh, just something like this, perhaps. And then select everything, insert a keyframe, and now I want it to go back to how it was at the start. So I'll alt right click on this first column of keyframes, Shift D to duplicate that, and I want to shift this over to frame 39. All right, I'll then set the end frame here to 38. Press Alt A to play, and obviously this is a very crude animation, but he does look like he's ready for battle. Okay, let's now move on to our first attack animation. So I'll close this action, create a new one called something like, uh, I guess, Sword Attack 1, and save that. And on the first frame, I'll add a keyframe for this idle pose, and then go forward, say, 9 or 10 frames. And I basically just want the sword arm to swing back over the shoulder. The shield will come up a bit. And then as the sword slashes down, it's going to take a step forwards and the shield will swing back. So let me start by raising this arm up a bit. I'll double tap R so I can freely rotate this uh, lower arm back. Rotate the hand as well. Something like this. Okay, maybe the shoulder needs to come back slightly. And you can also just rotate the whole body more sideways to uh, get, a, get some more force behind the swing. All right, rotate the head back so that it remains roughly forwards. And uh, at this point, it's probably a good idea to actually turn on the blend shapes so that we can get an idea of whether or not we're clipping through the mesh. So I'll quickly set all these values to one here. Okay, so a little bit of an intersection there and a bit of an intersection with the elbow. So I could try and tweak this somehow, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the exact pose that I want without any clipping here. So, I mean, it's not a big deal even at this late stage to modify the mesh slightly. I'll quickly go into edit mode and we're going to add in two loop cuts, just along there and two there. I'll quickly press T and enable my X mirror. So I just want to grab these two loops. I'll double tap G to just edge slide these more into the center and then Alt S, just puff them out a bit. Now if we go back into object mode, that is doing a better job of concealing. It's still showing a little bit. So I'll just puff it out slightly more. Eh, it's still there, but I mean, okay, we could also uh, modify the shape key, but for now I'm just going to leave that. It's not very noticeable. Might touch it up later. All right. So, I'm also going to make the character lean back a bit. Something like that. And I want to raise up this shield. I think that's looking pretty good. So I'll insert a keyframe for that first pose. Uh, this sword is maybe at a bit of a funny angle. I'll just rotate the hand a bit and update the keyframe. Coming forward a, another couple of frames, I'm now going to create the next pose. So uh, I want the character to have stepped forwards like so. He'll now be rotated more in the 
other direction. <laughs> That's a very funky pose. Uh, maybe this foot can be straightforward, like so. And uh, I guess what's going on is you need to actually move both of these knee targets. All right. You can maybe roll up onto the ball of the foot here. Okay. Lean forwards. And I'll rotate this some more. Rotate the head back. And I'm going to just reset the rotation on the arm here. So I can bring that down into the final striking pose. Bring that across the body slightly since it is going to be a sort of a slash like this. Have a look at that from the side. I'll reset the rotation on these two arm bones here. That looks okay. So I guess this is roughly what I want. I'll select all of those, insert a keyframe, and let's just have a look at how that's going. So I would definitely like this foot to lift off the ground instead of just sliding forwards. So I guess roughly halfway through, just rotate it forwards a little bit, lift it off the ground, and maybe the body can raise up slightly for that step. So I'll insert a keyframe on those two bones. And then on this second to last frame, I can prepare for the foot to come down like so. Okay, now one thing I want to pay attention to is the path of the sword. Obviously we want this to be a nice smooth arc. So to help visualize this, I'm going to go into edit mode on the armature and I want to add a temporary bone that comes to the tip of the sword here. So I'm going to select this handhold bone and from side view, I'll just extrude this out. Now we go into wireframe mode so I can just position that a bit more precisely. And then I don't want this one that's been mirrored over onto the shield side. So I'll just press T, turn off the X axis mirror and then delete that. All right, since I extruded this from the head of the uh, handhold bone, it's not actually parented. So I'm going to select this, shift select the handhold bone, control P and parent keeping the offset. Then going into pose mode in the armature panel here, we have this motion path section and I'm interested in seeing motion paths from frame nine onwards. So with just this sword bone selected, I'm going to set the display range to nine and say calculate. Okay, so now we can see the path that the sword is following. And so if we look at this from the side and, and think, well, actually we want this to be a little bit higher, well, we could maybe come forward a few frames and lift up the arm like so, insert keyframes on that, and then the path doesn't update automatically, unfortunately. We have to select the sword bone and manually ask it to update the paths. So I'm just going to continue tweaking this for a bit. At the start of the swing here, I'd like to round this out a bit. So uh, I'll lift the arm up a tiny bit over here and maybe on this frame as well. And let me update that. That looks better. Then I don't really like the abrupt change in direction here. I'll try smooth that out slightly. So on this frame, maybe the arm can be a little bit wider out. And I'll tweak that on the last frame as well. Let's update that. That looks more like it. There's a bit of a funny change in direction here. So maybe this can come in a bit like that. Let me update that. I'll look at this from the top. Maybe get a better idea of what's going on. All right, now I wanna grab the hand bone so that we can adjust the, uh, the angle that the sword is being held. And of course we want this to be sort of in the same direction that the sword is moving. So uh, between these two frames, we can see the sword is moving in this direction. So we want the sword to sort of align with that. 
The frustrating thing, of course, is that as you change the angle of the hand, the path itself changes, so it can feel a bit like you're chasing your own tail, but if we keep tweaking this, we'll get there eventually. So let me update that. And I think this is starting to look fine. We can, of course, press this little X here to get rid of the path, just see how it looks without that. And okay, it's still looking a little bit rough, but in the interest of time, I'm going to call that acceptable and move on. So uh, last thing I want to do for this animation is just getting the character returning back to his initial pose. So I'll alt right click on this first column of keyframes, shift D, and move that out to about frame 30. So he now attacks and slides back. Uh, don't want him to slide back immediately though. So I'm going to grab this uh, leg IK. You can see it highlighted here in the dope sheet summary. Just grab this keyframe, shift D to duplicate it. I'll just move that out a couple more frames to hold it in place. So you can see it, uh, it waits a little bit before returning to its original position. And I'll come to sort of the middle of these two keyframes here. And I'm going to lift this foot up a bit so it's not just sliding along the ground, like so. And I'll position the hips just like above the leg and a little bit higher up. And set keyframes on both of those bones. So now he's taking a step back. Let's also then look at this from the front. And here I don't really like how the angle of the sword changes uh, at the end of the strike here. So I am going to find the hand bone and just duplicate that last keyframe, move it out, same as we did with the foot. And now that keeps its orientation for a little bit. One last very quick adjustment I want to make is just to this uh, foot here. If I go into the first frame and position the 3D cursor just at the tip of the toes, you can see that this is actually sliding back quite a lot. So I'll just quickly adjust this so that the tip of the toe is remaining inside the 3D cursor there. Just something like that should be a lot better. Okay, I'm going to call this animation done for now and move on to creating a lunge attack. Now, you can reuse a lot of this animation for that. So instead of creating a new action from scratch, I'll just press this 2 to duplicate this. I'll save it and call this attack 2. And I want to delete these keyframes here for the right arm and hand bones. So I can now come here. I'll reset the rotation, and from front view, quickly go to hide the shield, because it's blocking my view, and just get this arm pointing forwards, like so, and from side view I'll get this swinging back a bit, and I don't think the body's going to lean back so much for this one. Alright, so I'll insert a keyframe for that, and then here, the arm's doing very strange things, reset the rotation, and just position this how I want. So the hand can just rotate down so that the sword is pointing forwards. Okay, I'll insert a frame for that. Now, currently the arm is sort of swinging around in this weird arc. I want it to just come straight forward. So we're going to have to add in some keyframes in between to just keep this rotating down by the side of the body and keep the sword straight. Okay, as the sword comes back, I don't want him to slice through his own leg if possible. Okay, so just got to tweak these things so that the arm doesn't sort of wave back and forth in a weird way. Having to counteract some of the rotation of the body here, which is uh, making it a bit awkward. But if we go through this frame by frame, we can get it how we want. 
All right, let me go into object mode so I can bring the shield back and just make sure that this looks okay together. And I think that's looking fine. Okay, last animation I want to create is just a little punch animation for when the character doesn't have a weapon equipped. So I'll quickly hide the sword and the shield. And I can also delete or hide this sword bone we created. And I'm once again going to work from the first attack animation as a base. So I'll duplicate that, call this punch, and save it. And then go into pose mode. And on this first punch pose, can maybe just lean back a little bit less and can adjust this arm. Want the uh, palm of the hand to be facing sort of more towards the ground. So I can rotate that like so. I think that's looking okay. So I will insert a frame there. Quickly delete these intermediate arm and hand keyframes and then go forward to this next major frame. And here, I'm going to lift up the shoulder. And we do want the palm of the hand facing downwards. So I'm going to rotate this along the Y axis, uh, something like that, and then rotate this one a little bit more. Okay, so it's now facing down and maybe just bring this across the body slightly, bring the shoulder forward, and maybe this arm can come back even further here. All right, I might actually rotate the arm a bit less, but then instead rotate the upper body a bit more. I'll try inserting a keyframe for that. And I think that's looking okay. So that is going to be everything for this episode. Until next time, cheers.